kind of stuff. That is, yes, it's constant, brother. Never change. Never change. Now, truth. Yeah. Opinions change. Yeah. Doctrines change. Traditions change. You see what I'm saying? Human scruples change. But the truth is that which is consistent with fact and reality. So, uh, when I say that I found the truth, the truth that I came to grips with was the fact that I had been lied to. Okay, now that's, that's the truth. The truth that I came to grips with was the fact that the story that was taught to us was stolen from us. The truth that I came to grips with was the fact that a, another people created a belief system to teach us knowing it would rob us of our power. The truth that I came to grips with is knowing that religion is completely incompatible for black people. We are a spiritual people. Yeah. We don't live by religion, brother. We live by spirit. Okay, all right. So, if maybe 10 years from now, I see Dr. Ray in St. Louis, uh -huh. there's a possibility that he might be preaching Islam or Buddhism based upon of, of, uh, information that might uh, present itself to evolve you from this stage now to a next stage which is a truth. I got you. I got you. Yeah. And in answer to your question, one of the phrases that I say when I'm talking to people is, at this point in my development, okay, because one of the things I've come to grips with, my brother, is I am developing, I'm still learning, okay, now, will I be preaching religion, I don't think I'm going to ever devolve, <laughs> notice how I'm saying that, okay, to the point where I'm going to preach religion, because religion, I have found that religion is the deification of someone's culture, okay, uh, when you say Islam, that's the deification of an Arabic culture, when you say Buddhism, that's the deification of an Oriental culture, uh, Hinduism, that's the, you follow what I'm saying, uh, create Christianity, it's the deification of a European culture, okay, uh, so, and, and the deep thing about religion is religion is about making people think that this is what God said about something. That's what religion is, okay? Uh, and, and, and we have to actually get to the point if we're going to empower ourselves. And this is, the, this is why I'm so excited about being here for the Marcus Garvey celebration. You follow what I'm saying? Because Marcus's message, even though he was dealing with us at a certain point in our growth and development, Marcus's message was, as you so well know, up you mighty people. You, shall accomplish. you can accomplish what you will. The reason why we're not accomplishing what we will is because our will has been snatched from us and, and, and has been supplemented with doctrine and indoctrination. And we even pray. We pray, Lord, not my will, but thine will. But thy will be done. Okay? To even say not my will means you have surrendered your will. You follow me? But that's what religion does to us, bro. Even the as it is always oh, oh, written in the Bible about the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not, instead of not of I, in the, in the Egyptian um, Semitic understanding of it, it says, you take personal responsibility for the things that you do. Yes. So you say, not have I done this, not have I done that, and if you have found wanting by the Mahat, yes, you will have to go back and restart the whole thing until you get the thing right. Yes. Yeah, so in the in the in the Christian thing it say thou shalt not meaning no there is someone saying which is you saying thou shalt not like just pointed to somebody else. Right. Thou shalt not mm -hmm. instead of I shall not right. Exactly. And as see again Calm down. Who, who dare 
tell somebody what God said. Yeah. We don't do that, man. Like him, I have four number for God. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. you know. The, what, see, what, the thing that's deep about African spirituality is each one of us can hear the voice of the Almighty in us. Yeah. We don't need somebody to tell us yeah. what God said. Usually when people say that, it's what somebody wants you to think that God said. That's what religion is all about. So therefore, it ends up becoming a control mechanism. And we're not free as a people. And until we become free as a people, we're not going to experience our power as a people. See, they knew that, man, when they gave us religion. They knew when they snatched us out of our motherland and force religion on us that it would keep us from tapping into our own spirituality yes. and, 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 and so one of the analogies that I use my brother is the reason why a bird cannot fly is because it's in a cage you don't have to teach a bird to fly it's natural spirituality is natural for us the reason why we're not experiencing our spiritual power is because we're in a cage of, of people's standards, or a cage of people's concepts. Of religious beliefs. Thank you, brother. We have a lot of religious beliefs that bind into that cage. Thank you. This is the cutting edge, and I refer to talking to, I should say, Dr. Brother, 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 Ray. Brother, brother Ray is fine with me, man. I don't use the word reverend, and I don't. I didn't, and, and actually, I'm trying to move our people away from pastor because the word pastor means shepherd. Yeah. And in order to be a shepherd, the people got to be sheep. Sheep. Yeah. And sheep are the dumbest animals on the planet. Yeah. They don't think. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I'd rather just say brother Ray or Imwali Mu, which means teacher. Okay. Okay. All right, you you going to present um, a, a, a lecture on Sunday. I know that, but we have four hours for this program, man, and I don't know how tired he is. Okay, man. <laughs> brother, uh, it's an honor to be here, brother. Okay, man. I'll sleep after it's over, this brother. This is a marathon program, you know. This is a marathon program, man. <laughs> because I know that the listener is so overwhelmed when they were told that they were to be live in the studio. It is like, wow, you know, I'm honored, brother. We are going to the studio in Mutabaro. You can't miss that. Yeah. All right. So, so, I could ask, you know, the thing. You say you lose a lot of um, your, 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 your church membership. No, yes. you start uh, a different kind of yes. gathering now. Yes. Um, it reached 500 yet. Oh man, we are way, way over that. I, I have 185,000 listeners to, just to Black Liberation on, Radio. On radio? Yes. On uh -huh. Yeah, we, our headquarters is in St. Louis. We have an African village in Atlanta, an African village in Memphis, an African village uh, in Baltimore. We are in Charlotte, North Carolina, Detroit, Michigan, Chicago, Illinois, uh, Youngstown, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, and uh, Lakeland, Florida. Well, we're growing, man. Yes, 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 yes. we're growing. And people, the, the people them of the old really of the old church. Have you seen any of them evolving to this? Yes. New idea, or the information that they have not received. Yes. They come to you and say, "Why, well, brother, really, you want to say, I hear you change this thing, but now I realize that it was necessary to change." Yes. Yes. And, 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 and in fact, I have a lot of ministers. Uh, that have transitioned over and again my approach is different now what I do now my brother is I, I, I show people the facts and, as you, and again I always say don't take my word for what I'm saying go do your own research I'll give the facts and say now just go val go validate what I said yeah, I, see? yeah I, did, I did that something right up on this program and you know I said something and I said look your man information today we are going to find out if it's true or a lie, I'll tell you. Know, yeah. It's necessary and important. I tell you. You have a whole heap of youth follow you, or it's just old people like me follow you. Yeah. You have a whole heap of young people in the church, or just old people like me. Actually, most, <laughs> actually, man, most of my followers now, and I don't like these word followers, yeah, yeah, most, yeah. most of my students, most of the people who are part of our fellowship are, are older than me. Okay. And, I'm, and I'm 60 years old. So you don't have no young people in your country? We do have, we do have some, very, oh yeah, we got a lot of them. 
we have a lot of young people, especially our group out of Baltimore. They're all young people under 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 35 years old. So all you do, you, 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 you shift from one state to the next, like when, when you keep your your phone, your meetings, you know, mm-hmm. what you do. You are, are just on the radio, you reach everybody. That's exactly how we have grown. Uh, people listen to Black Liberation Radio, and and I get a phone call from someone saying, uh, Doc. Well, we would love for you to come and speak in our city. And, uh, for example, we're getting ready to open, open an African village in Dallas. I was asked to come to Dallas. I have a strong listener base in Dallas. And, uh, and then they want to start an African village fellowship. Okay. So that's how it's been growing. And the deep thing about this, man, is I have not been trying to do this. I'm not trying to grow anything. You know, I told the Almighty and the ancestors, I just want to teach the truth. That's it. You know, and as a result of just teaching the truth, man, people are hearing it. And the deep thing about it, the brother said it to me this way. He said, Ray, truth is that which rings like a bell when you hear it. You know, and he said he heard and his eyes opened up and he, he, hey man, and that's how it's happening. All right. What is the problem with idea like for instance the, the, the bible is the is the authority of most of us understanding of this god that we feel about and this man named jesus is supposed to be the gateway to this god what is the problem where people find comfort in believing this thing even though People like me and you are telling them, say, this thing uh, is uh, ignorance, is, is, uh, is, uh, is not bliss. But people believe it and find a kind of comfort in it. What is the danger of that? Because people live out their whole life and be comfortable with it. And now we come down and tell them, say, you know, it, 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 it can't work that way. But it did not work for them for years. And actually, it has not worked. Them. All you have to do is look at us as a people. All right. Okay. Um, my brother, there's no group of people on this planet that is more committed, more loyal, more faithful to the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church than black folk. And again, I, you know, uh, forgive me for kind of keep going back to this, brother, but the movie Sankofa, which I first saw you in. Yeah. That scene where the Roman Catholic priest yes, it's, it's, yes. was 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 whipping uh what, Lulu, yes. you see what I'm saying, and making her vow, and when he was walking Joe through the church, convincing him and, and broke programming him, that's what has happened to all of us. That's why I love that movie so. Yes. Now what's deep about it is this: I'll show you how how awesome the African mind, not just the African mind, the mind period, but especially the African mind. By profession, I'm a psychologist. I, that's my profession as a doctor. Uh, I'm a cognitive psychologist, not clinical, but a cognitive psychologist. Explain what that is. A cognitive psychologist is the study of human behavior based on what people believe. Okay. Okay? And, of course, church folk <laughs> pretty much pushed me into this discipline of study. There's a thing called an egregore. Now, most of our folk have no idea what an egregore is. It's spelled E-G-R-E, G-O-R-E. And, uh, and uh, as I say all the time to the listeners, don't take my word for what I'm saying. Write it down and look it up for yourself. It's E-G-R-E, G-O-R-E, an egregore. Brother Baruka, an egregore is what is called the manifestation of a person's thought processes. In other words, if a person believes a thing hard enough, their thought processes will produce what we as psychologists refer to as an egregore, which is a manifestation, whether it's an emotional manifestation, a physiological manifestation of what they think and believe. So for many of our people, they experience an egregore and so, therefore, they think their belief is real. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So, once a person comes to grip with grips with the facts, see, there's a difference between a fact and faith. When you believe a thing, that means you don't know it. You don't have to believe I'm sitting at a microphone. You're looking at me 
me sitting at a microphone. So you know I'm sitting at a microphone. You follow me? When you don't know a thing, you have no recourse but to believe it. For most of us, Doc, it's about belief. Now, when you have been deracinated, meaning cut off, when you have been uh, lied to about who you are, when you have been told that you are a sinner, and you were taught that from childhood, when you've been convinced that there's nothing good in you, then you begin to have such low self-esteem of yourself that you actually begin to reach for whatever concept is there that will help you to have a sense of hope. And this is what religion has done for us. And so, yes, a lot of our people believe, and as a result of believing that someone is going to make things better for them instead of them making it better for themselves. They put their trust in that. They put their hope in that. And they get joy about what's going to happen one day. It's not happening right now. Follow me? Just one day it's going to be all right. And, and because we don't have anything to lock on to as far as where we came from and who we are and what we are. Now, deep, Doc, listen, the powers that be know who we are and they know what we are and they know what would happen if we ever return to an awareness of ourselves. So they must never. Uh, one person said it this way. When you have told so many lies over the centuries that to tell the truth about one of your earlier lies will cause you to lose all that you have accomplished, you must never, ever tell the truth. So those who lied to us must continue to lie to us. Unfortunately, I was one of those was lied to. who was lied to and then trained to tell the lie. To tell the lie. I perpetuate the lie. Yes, I sir. I repeat the lie. Yes. yes. Man, I mean, I got my master's in religious education. I got a bachelor's of theology. I got a master's in sacred literature. And I hold two doctorates in the program. Okay, so I'm very well trained in the lie. In the lie, bro. <laughs> Don't make me think about it, man. <laughs> oh, brother. Hey, you know, my thing, man, is if I can reach just just a little bit of the people with the truth that I reach with the lie, I will breathe my last breath as a happy man. Uh, you know, the lie is so deep that they have everybody believing that there is something other than what is going to happen or what not going to happen. In other words, a man tells you that Jesus will come back to save the world. But you yourself will never see that day. And it never happens. But you believe that it's going to happen. You know, they say most Americans believe that they are going to live in the time of the rapture. Most well, Americans well, believe that. Well, now, here's, here's the deep thing about that, my brother. If people would simply read the Bible. See, that's why I like to take people to the Bible. I like to take them to the very book that they believe in. The Bible actually tells us that the rapture is not going to happen. It tells people that. But those verses are not preached from pulpits. All right, we're going to give it time. We'll give the people. Since we're going to go to the Bible, so much it's in the book of the four. We're going to give the people them more time to go for the Bible. I know you're going to refer to the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> this is the cutting edge on RFM. It's the things you can. Yes, cutting edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before we go to the break, you were start. What was that? Can you say about the rapture? <laughs> you, you say the Bible says there will be no rapture. That's correct. Okay, so you have to explain now why you say that. So, by a biblical. Now, now you, you, you know what we. The point that we're at right now is the point that I was at when I tried to tell my members of the congregation yeah. that they had been taught wrong and everybody ran off and left, right? No, uh, well, they're, they're used to this program that we had. Oh, okay, program. okay, 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 because... Uh, well, call him friend and turn on the radio. Okay, good, good, good. Well, the reason why I say that is because the Bible actually declares. Now, I'm only doing this because I realize that the masses of our people are still stuck there. You follow me? So let's go to where they are. A, a good teacher is one who has the ability, like a, like a
like a school teacher who may have a master's in education. A good school teacher is one who has the ability with a master's in education to go to a second or third or fourth grade classroom every day and relate on that level to those children because the job of the teacher is to provide the information necessary for the student to move to the next level. Okay, having said that, uh, for those who, who, who are listening and want to, you know, really see this, all you have to do is turn to Matthew, the 24th chapter uh, in the Bible, and, and it actually says, plain as day, and let me, let me, let me get it here, uh, Matthew 24, I had it, uh, where did I do with it? Uh, bear with me, man, I, I, I got all these pages up here. Uh, Matthew 20, here we go, okay. Let's look at Matthew, the 24th chapter. Now, instead of reading this whole thing and taking up all this time with a lot of Bible verses, the 24th chapter of Matthew is the chapter about the rapture. It is the rapture about when the Son of Man shall come back in the clouds, okay? And actually, it actually says in the, uh, let's see, the verse, um, 29th verse. Okay, it says immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, it's already, he just previously said, for then shall be great tribulation, as was not known before, never known before. It says in the 29th verse, immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, I'm, I'm just reading what, verse, what words are here. Many of us have taught, not taught, that the rapture is supposed to take place before the tribulation. But in this verse, 29th verse of the 24th chapter of Matthew, it says immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. 30th verse. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now check out this, my brother. The 34th verse, to save some time, get right to the point. And this is the verse we never hear. 34th verse says, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. All right, so the, the generation, this is why you was talking to 2,000 years ago. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, a lot of people interpret like it's them them generation when it was something that was said to a generation 2,000 years ago. Well, it's so the generation past that he was talking to. And yes, it was the people he was talking to at that time. Yeah, them dead. Like, they're all dead. <laughs> yeah, they're dead. And then to really, to really, you know, uh, uh, add to it, the, the ninth chapter of Luke, the first verse, he says it this way. He says, Verily I say unto you, there are some of you standing here listening to me right now. Shall not see that. You know it, brother. You got it. You got it. <laughs> you know, we have to know these things, you know, because when we say certain things, we have to really know exactly why we don't believe it. Because we know it. I know say it's a craziness. But we say there is many here. He was talking to the people who were standing in front of him. Standing in front of him, brother. He said, there's many here that shall not see death until the Son of Man appear. You got it. Those people dead long they time have never appeared. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So how did we get to, I mean, fix it up so to make it look like, say, he was talking to me? Because, and as we, one of the things that I teach as a psychologist, and that is this, the greatest and most dangerous psychopathology is the belief in something simply because you want it to exist yes. or you need it to exist yeah, it's like you cut off your foot to match the shoes yeah that you cut off your foot that you can't fit in the shoes yeah yes. and that's where our that's where the masses of our people are so my assignment yes. you know I, I understand that god allowed me to become a master of sacred literature, yes. to become a, a, a have a master's in theology. I, I, my assignment is to be able to show my people how we were misled, how we were bamboozled, how we were blindfolded. You see what I'm saying? And usher them back to my, to remove the cage, Doc. Yes. To remove the cage because we can't fly. Yes. Not because we don't know how to fly. Yeah, but the cage. 
we can't fly because we're in a cage. Yes, yes. So my sermon, man, is to remove that cage of religion, of of European traditions. Okay, that is that has that has disempowered us. Yeah. You know, yeah. the first time I man, I'm bridging sit down and we'll go through that same reasoning about there's many years that shall not see death after mm-hmm. the son of man appear. I said, but we but them people they dead and never come back. That's right. It, 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 it's like a bull just clicking at me. Okay. I said, but we oh we get for really a talk like the thing was talking to two thousand years after that. It was talking to right. two thousand years before now. And, and 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 everybody that's listening to us right now, if they read that, they see it. Yeah, of course they see it. Okay. I can't quote it word for word. Yeah, they, 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 they see it. You know, uh, the, the thing is, I've shared this with pastors. Yeah. And and I say, you know, not because I'm trying to hurt other pastors. Yeah. But brothers, if you really love God, like you say you love God, yeah. and if you're really serious about ministry and healing our people and setting our people free, then we must tell the truth. Yes. Okay? You, uh, Baruch, you'd be surprised how many pastors have said to me, man, I don't want to see that. Yes, yes, yes. They turn their head, man, I don't want to see that. Because if they see it, then their conscience mandates that they must do something about it. it of course. You know? I, I, spoke, I, I spoke at the... The, the, the theological college in Jamaica invited me and I, I, was, I was speaking and I was told that the information that I was presenting was what they learned at the theological college. Mm-hmm. So my question was then if we learn this thing at the theological college, why would we not go out there to minister to the people who not go back to the old time things right. and who say why would we don't talk about the things them know? That you don't get in this theological college from me gonna get up here and other people them jump wake up out of the illusion. They must say, well, you know, Muta, you know, you can't bother man in Chicago good evening, in other words, it can't bother already. So them just go and continue for me to think about it. And I say, wow, that is deep, man. There's a there's an old phrase, man, we sing uh, that we say that God told Moses to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. The pharaohs of today, man, and and to any pastors that's listening, brothers and sisters, I don't mean any disrespect. Please don't take it that way. I'm speaking from the the deepest part of my heart. My passion is to see our people empowered to be healed, to be raised up uh, like like our warrior uh, and elder, uh, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. They cried, they cried to us, man. You know, we have to get up from where we are because we can accomplish what we will. Yeah. We can do it. One of the, you know, so, so, so pastors, I don't mean no harm, but the pastors of the pharaohs today that's keeping our people enslaved. They're keeping enslaved intellectually. They're keeping them enslaved spiritually. See, here's the thing, man, and I had to come to grips with this as a pastor, and here it is. When those who depend upon you learn what you know, they don't need you no more. Yes. You see? And in order for many pastors to stay in business, and I got to call it like it is, man. Doc, listen, when I was preaching Christianity, I made big money, man. I'm not going to lie. I mean, man, it looks like you still have big money, though. Anybody can pass the look test, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, and I tell people, I mean, I, I'm a doctor. I, I'm a doctor. I'm, I'm a musician. I own my own music company. So my money doesn't come from ministry. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 But uh, but I, I do try to look good, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we got to set our people free, Muta. Yeah, yeah. We got to set our people free. You know, right. stick up in. I want to come back to something you say because I, I, I realize that this is also a residue from the whole European idea. When you said that the pastors are the fears of today, you insinuating that means that you are buying into the idea that there was a group of people, namely Israelites, who was enslaved by a group of people named the Pharaohs. 
which I personally would not give credence to that because then now it demonized Pharaohs to make we start to believe that the Pharaohs were some evil people. Um, I'm glad you said that. Putting some slaves uh, in, in, in things. So we keep saying the Pharaohs like the Pharaohs are some wicked people. And like, you know, not understanding. I got you. Yeah, I yeah, got you. Yeah. I got you. And I thank you for that. Because nothing can be farther from the truth. Yeah, yeah. You follow me? I, I was saying that in the context of, of the enslaver. Yeah. And we were taught. Yeah. You notice how I'm saying that? We were taught that the pharaohs were enslavers. Yeah. The truth of the matter is, you see, as I begin to do my field research in Egypt, and I've been going, man, for the last 12, 13 years, okay, doing field research, I found out, brother, and this is another thing that's devastating me, I found out, and I've been going, man, for the last 12, 13 years, okay, doing field research, I found out, brother, and this is another thing that's devastating me, I found out that there was never an exodus. There was no Israel. Israel. There was no Israel. But people in you know, I just found out the other day, which is serious. I just found out the other day in research that there was no Nazareth before the New Testament. There was no Nazareth. There was no right. city or town in Jerusalem, in, 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 in where they call Israel. There was no place. Nazareth. Nazareth is a construct to place a man named Jesus in a situation there you to go. fulfill something that was said yes. in the the, Jew, the, 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 in, in the Jew, Jewish Bible. Yes. You know, but yes. basically... You would know Nazareth. There. Actually, brother, to be honest with you, there was no Old Testament period. Yeah, there was no Old Testament, but them saying, you know, I mean, this is so, so, which that's called it Old Testament. Uh, so, see, the, the, the thing is, uh, what a lot of people don't know is that the Old Testament is newer than the New Testament. Yes, yes. You follow me? Yes. Okay, what we're dealing with here, okay, and this is this is historically historical fact. Anybody listening to me, please uh, do the research on the word Kazar. And if you have something to write with, that's spelled K-H-A-Z-A-R-S, Kazars, and Ashkenazim, Ashkenaz, A-S-H-E-K-E-N-A-Z, Ashkenazim, or with an